afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we, we, we meet on a Tuesday afternoon to discuss a couple of things that, that's going out, uh, going on in the investment industry or on the financial services industry. Um, today's uh, live broadcast from Good For Sure is all about uh, international investments. The question always comes up from clients uh, at a particular situation uh, to say, listen, you know, should I invest offshore? Is it the right time to invest offshore? So um, we thought it would be good to get someone from Glacier International, the platform we use to access offshore investments, to come and talk to our clients. But while we give a couple of clients still uh, opportunity to, to come online, uh, I see there's a couple of people still joining. Uh, in your chat, you'll see uh, I've given you a little bit of a, a CV of, of Andile from Glacier International that will be our guest speaker uh, to, to, to make it a bit, a bit easier. Um, and like I said, while we wait, there is a button at the bottom of your screen that says uh, schedule a consultation. So if, if uh, you would like to set up a meeting with, with an advisor or one of your advisors, uh, if you're an existing client or new, please make use of this functionality. Um, it shows our diaries on a, on a live uh, link, so you can, you can actually schedule it when it, when it suits you. Uh, I see there's a lot of new, uh, uh, new clients that's joining us or, or new uh, attendees to this live webinar today. Uh, we want to welcome you and our existing clients that has actually uh, been with us for, for many, many years and, and joined these webinars on a, on a regular basis. We try and add value and, and communicate important information to you. So there's one or two people still joining us. I'm going to give over to Andile uh, now. Just two things that I want to quickly mention today. Today was a phenomenal run for local uh, for local equities. Um, just to give you, for, for interest sake, uh, we always get a question on, on, on these webinars on a Tuesday. So what about Sassel? Uh, I think we've had the question probably in every single one. What about the Sassel share? So just to give you an indication, Sassel's up almost 11% as we speak today. Growth points up, Investex up, Woolworths is up, really fine properties is up, Old Mutual uh, uh, shares are up. All these shares are up over, over the 7%. So um, just to give you an idea, today was a, a big run, um, and uh, it's it's not always to how can I say it's not always a a, a great thing to say. Oh, the market is running. Uh, it should be looked at with a lot of caution. Uh, you've heard from Corin last week. You've heard it from Alan Gray and Coronation as well, and from Peter Dumini. Uh, we in volatile times, so be on the lookout. Uh, don't read too much into it, but be be aware of the fact that equities are actually doing doing runs uh, at, the, at the moment. So I'm going to hand over to Andile. So while I um, invite Andile on, on screen, uh, another thing that, that we, we heard today is that in the past, if you a, a client that is retired, um, there is legislation that came out, uh, you'd know that you can only change your income once a year on your income revision date. So it's just been uh, confirmed this afternoon via email from Glacier to us that uh, you can actually change your income percentage at any time now, or you, you can actually change it even if it's not your income revision date. So uh, we don't say you should go and change it just, but if there's a crisis, please speak to one of your advisors. The option that was not available due to legislation is, is available now. So um, I'm going to get a delay on screen, yeah, and then we'll we'll get this this going. So I'm going to close up this. Uh, let's see, so I will chat. Let's see. Okay, bring a delay up. Welcome, a delay. Thank you very much. Can you hear me loud and clear? I can hear you loud and clear. Everybody that's listening in can hear you loud and clear. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, I assume that you and Leon did a test run with your screen share. If there's issues, then I'll just come back on screen and, and I'll assist you. And like we always say to our clients, to everybody listening in, this is live. This is not pre-recorded. So if there's a hiccup along the line, uh, bear with us. We'll sort it out um, and, and, and we'll take it from there. Once again, thanks for taking time this afternoon, Andile, to talk to our right. clients. Uh, there's a lot of questions about investing offshore. What's the right vehicle? Is it the right time? So there is an ask a question section at the bottom for our first time attendees. Please have a look at it. Um, pop a question in there. Uh, Andile is going to open the floor at the at the end of the presentation for people to ask questions. And, and we, we hope that we can add value and, and clear up some things about inter international investment. So let me get out of here. Andile, uh, before, the floor. Before I let you go, <coughs> 
excuse me. Uh, oh, okay. I needed confirmation that you can actually see um, the screen that I'm on now. I'm gonna. There okay. we go. We can we can share it perfectly. We can see it quite a nice. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see that there's a little bar that says, uh, you just say hide there. Hide. Okay. And then I'm going to be out of here and everybody can see it quite nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you um, for, for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as um, it's been alluded to, my name is Andile. I'm a Glacier International Account Manager. Um, just by way of introduction, I just want to quickly start off by introducing who, introducing rather, who Glacier is in the bigger scheme of things. So Glacier forms part of uh, Glacier by Sunlam, who is uh, part of the broader uh, Sunlam group. Um, we were launched uh, in 2010. We are headquartered, we operate out of Bermuda um, for various reasons, which I'll touch on. In, in the next few slides, uh, but mainly for us, Bermuda is, I mean, uh, some of you may know this, is one of the tax um, havens. We um, have offices in Durban, Cape Town, and uh, Johannesburg. Most of our SA, or South African admin, is processed in Cape Town, and everything that goes over to Bermuda is clean paper. Um, uh, just, uh, just by indication, uh, for new business, you're looking at on or around five to seven working days. Uh, maybe just to, to, to kickstart my presentation, I wanted to first just outline how much an individual can invest offshore before we, we talk how one can invest. So SA, one individual can invest up to 10 million rand per calendar year. That's beginning of Jan to the end of uh, December. I know there's a, a misconception about this, uh, some clients or some people think it's a uh, tax uh, calendar year, which is fair too much. It's actually the 10 million rand offshore allowance or foreign investment allowance is from uh, 1st of Jan until the end of December. Part of the 10 million that you can invest, which is up to 1 million rand, doesn't require tax clearance. So you can invest without ever um, having to apply for a, a tax clearance at SARS. However, should you invest an amount in excess of 1 million rand? Um, we've got a company that you've partnered with called Encompass. They assist our clients at a preferential rate. So they do the paperwork for you. They will go and queue up, uh, obviously not physically. Um, they will do the uh, tax application for you. They will do the Forex um, for you. Uh, by Forex, I mean if you've got um, South African rent sitting in your bank account, they will convert and invest um, offshore in um, a, a currency of your choice. I'm going to talk about the different currencies that we hold on our platform in the next few slides. Another important um, takeaway from this slide is who can invest offshore? I mean, this answer is um, answered by the requirements. One, you need to be over the age of 18. You need to be a South African resident with a South African ID. And obviously, with your tax number, your tax affairs needs to be in order, particularly if we're going to have to apply for tax clearance from SARS for you, because obviously your tax affairs need to be um, in order. Speaking of um, investing offshore, the first thing that you need to um, ensure as you consider offshore investing, investing is the structure of your investment. It's very, very important. I'll, I'll talk about the difficulties or the complications of investing offshore um, when you do it um, alone or when you um, do it directly. But for now, for the purposes of this slide, I mean, what I did here is I compared um, what, what going alone or investing directly offshore would be versus um, using a wrapper. I, I used as an example the Global Life Plan, which is one of our flagship products at Glacier International. Um, I'll delve into detail on the product um, in a few slides, but what, what is, what's important about this slide is if you compare from a tax implication perspective, if you were to compare how one is taxed if they invested directly, we can see that from a CGT perspective, CGT capital gains tax, you would be paying an effective rate of 18% if you invested directly offshore on your own. But if you were to use um, one of Good For Show's 
professionals and they invested you um, via the global life plan. Tax um, efficiency means CGT is at 12 percent, income tax is at 30 percent, 30 percent, as opposed to um, up to 45 percent, which is uh, based on your marginal tax rate. Dividend tax is 20 percent on both options, but what sets the global life plan or a REPA as we refer it um, in the industry, what sets it apart is the fact that you, all these taxes I've mentioned are calculated and administered by Glacier International. So you don't have to worry about declaring a taxes to such. I can understand I'm dealing with the query, um, just as a, an aside, I'm actually dealing with the query of one of my clients, I'm trying to assist them. They had invested um, offshore directly and they're looking at moving their um, investment into the global life plan for obvious reasons, really. I mean, there's um, state planning benefits, uh, there's tax benefits, which I'll touch on in a few um, slides. But, but the, the issue now is having to calculate how much capital gains the client is liable for. One, we have to take the dollar uh, gain into account. And secondly, we have to take the rent gain into account. Once you combine those two, I can assure you, you would need to pay for services of a tax consultant. Simply put, if you invest um, directly offshore, tax or calculating tax can be a nightmare. And then secondly, from a winding up of, I mean, once you did, obviously, from a winding up of your estate uh, perspective, if you invested in the global life plan, because of the estate planning benefits that the plan or the wrapper comes with, you get to nominate beneficiaries, and in turn, those beneficiaries get to nominate other beneficiaries. I, I use an illustration of a family tree where you get the grandparents who nominate their um, children as beneficiaries. And once they pass on and the, the parents or the children take over the plan, they then nominate the grandchildren. And this could work like a trust structure where it's in the family and it goes down the family. The beauty of um, estate planning is no CGT is triggered as it moves down the family tree. So if I um, nominate my son, for instance, as a beneficiary on my global life plan, as I pass on and he takes over the plan, no CGT is triggered, um, no appropriate uh, risk um, or inheritance tax is triggered. I, I specifically or purposely highlighted probate risk as well as inheritance tax because I want to talk about them again in a few slides. Those are very important downside um, from a, a winding up of an offshore estate uh, perspective. Um, lastly, on this slide, in terms of flexibility, if you invest directly, it could take up to you know, days or weeks to move your portfolio. You know, we call those switches. In, in order to switch between funds, I mean, if I, were, if I were to use Global Life Plan as an example, the switch um, turnaround time for us, depending on the fund that you that you investing um, or you invested in or would like to invest in. You're looking at about three to five working days. If you are invested directly and you wanna switch between, for instance, bond to equities, depending on how the market is performing, it could take you some time, which could obviously disadvantage you from a market perspective, because obviously the market is very volatile at the moment. If there's an opportunity to move into a different asset class, for instance, move from cash to equities um, or from equities to cash now that the markets are volatile. I mean, you, it will take you weeks and weeks could result in a lot of um, loss. And another important thing about going at it alone is all your um, investment options will be scattered, meaning you might end up receiving four or five statements depending on how you've diversified your investments. Whereas if you use a global life plan, all your investment options, namely um, unit trust funds. Uh, we've also got model portfolios on the platform. We also have got uh, share portfolios. Uh, you can actually invest in shares and buy Apple shares as, it, as you please. Everything is in one plan, encapsulated in one plan. Tax is calculated in that plan. So there is no need to ever um, submit to such. I know I've said this before, but it is very important and it can cause a lot of um, frustration um, from a client perspective. And look, once once um, you've decided how much you'd like to invest, and let us uh, assume, and for, um, hopefully for us, you decide to use the wrapper. There's three 
investment options at Lisa International. Um, you get uh, the two life product or the endowment and the sinking fund, um, which is called the global life plan, as well as the global collection plan. You then get a list product called the global um, collection plan. I'm not going to spend any time on the global collection plan for obvious reasons. This is ideal for South Africa, for somebody who's coming to the country and an offshore resident who's coming to the country and is earning offshore currency and doesn't want to have to um, be paid out in rents and subsequently convert back into the homeland uh, currency, which would be dollars, euros or pounds. So what happens is they would most likely be suited for this product because there is no tax benefits. Uh, there's no restrictions. It's a straightforward offshore discretionary allowance. In terms of our, our minimums, we have got 25,000 US dollars um, across five different currencies. And maybe just let me explain it this way before I get into the actual amounts. We offer five different currencies on the platform. So you can invest in either uh, US dollars, uh, pounds, euros, Australian dollar, or Swiss franc. Or you can have a combination of all five. I've, I've seen clients who, over and above diversification in terms of um, funds or the market that they invested in, they also diversify across currencies. They'll have a bit um, in US dollars and have a bit in, in pounds. And, and obviously, once you've decided um, which currency you would like to invest in, 25,000 rand is the lump sum. And you can add to this investment. Once it's, it's started, you can add into this investment as and when, and the minimum is 5,000. I, I normally use US dollars because I think about 55% of our funds of, or, or our value, uh, market value sits in US dollar funds for obvious reasons. I mean, it's one of the highest um, daily traded currencies in the, in the, in the world, and I nearly said in the country. I alluded earlier on, um, to probate risk. One of the downsides um, of investing directly, and it's unfortunate that people only get to experience, or rather the investors themselves don't get to experience this frustration. It's the beneficiaries that get to um, you know, uh, uh, experience this frustration. But simply put, most countries don't recognize a South African will for one or other reasons. I mean, one, one reason that I was given the other day is I had a client who drafted their will in Afrikaans. From a South African perspective, because we are a multilingual, multicultural perspective, it's no um, issue to draft your will in Afrikaans. It can easily be interpreted into English. But if you've got a will, um, a will that um, is in Afrikaans and you now have an estate in the Isle of Man, for instance, it might be tricky from your heirs' perspective to try and claim that money back. So, so very important. Global life plan, because you get to nominate beneficiaries, you don't have to trigger any probate risk. There is no misinterpretation of your will. And the good, good thing about it is the, 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 the nature or the structure of the global life plan is such that it doesn't form part of your estate. Again, I did um, highlight inheritance tax. This slide is just to really outline how much you'd be looking at. Somebody is invested in this country in, in a discretionary investment. Should they pass away, 20% um, estate duty needs to be paid to the government. And the first three and a half million is exempt. So if you've got an estate of less than three million, the 20% doesn't count. The trick with offshore investing, and I use the US, as an example, obviously the UK has got its own uh, tax brackets as well. So CITAS assets are applicable in the US as well as in the UK. I've used for the purposes of this presentation, a US example. If you have got, and this is quite you know, um, frightening. If you've got an investment in excess of a million US dollars, something happens to you, 345,000 US dollars plus 40%, I estimate that to be close to half of the million will be paid into the US government. And that's notwithstanding the complications that will arise in order to get what is left of your um, million dollar investment uh, back into the country to your heirs. 
So it's quite important to really, really um, structure your investment such that there is no complications once you've passed on. I mentioned, I've alluded to this slide before, from a product set perspective, we've got three product, essentially two um, endowment type products, global life plan, as well as the investment plan, as well as the collection plan, which I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna spend much time on. The difference between the global life plan as well as the investment plan is the global investment plan is most suited for entities. And this is one of the questions I normally get when, when I go around presenting. I've, I've mentioned earlier that as a South African, um, you can externalize on a yearly basis up to 10 million rand, uh, which you obviously have to apply for tax clearance application for. I've got clients who own companies and would like their companies to invest directly offshore. This is where the global investment plan comes into play. I would say the global investment plan is a company equivalent of the global life plan. Global life plan, very suitable for um, individuals, whereas the global investment plan is suitable for companies. You will note from um, the points down here that the only difference between the global investment plan, which we acronym GIP and the GLP, is insolvency protection. I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to delve into the global life plan later on in, in, in my presentation, in my slides, and I'm going to explain how insolvency protection works. But the difference between the two is insolvency protection. The reason why we don't have it in the global investment plan is the structure of a company, whether it's a company or a trust, the structure itself provides for insolvency planning. If you've got a company with four directors and something happens to one of the directors, the rest of the directors take over. Whereas with an individual, something happens to you, you need some sort of um, cushion or protection um, from, from creditors, which again, I'll go into much detail in, on in my presentation. One, we've, we've um, determined how much you can invest offshore. Secondly, how you can invest offshore, and this is via a global life plan. And then thirdly, I did allude to this earlier on, you've got three, actually four investment options in, in, in within the global life plan. By investment options, I'm talking about four different categories. One, you can have, um, you can diversify across collective investment schemes or what we commonly refer to as unit trust funds in this country. On the platform, we've got in excess of 700 funds, which most of them are, I, mean, I mentioned this earlier on, most of them are US dollar denominated, um, with 25% being um, pound denominated. We also have a few uh, Euro funds as well as uh, Swiss franc and Australian dollar funds. And what's nice is about, we've got funds covering different sectors. I mean, we've got global funds, We've got regional specific funds. We've got specialist funds. If you're looking for, um, most recently I've had requests on our biotech funds, funds that invest predominantly in biotech. So we do have specialist funds that invest in specific technologies. So the world is your oyster. I mean, 700 funds is a lot to choose from. And that is why we uh, prefer as Glacier International to deal with uh, you through an advisor um, like uh, Good for Show, because obviously with 700 funds, it would be quite tricky for the men on the street to choose which one to prove to choose from. And then secondly, in terms of the investment option, before I get there, uh, for me this is um, more of a break slide. Uh, this just showcases some of the um, fund managers that we've got on the platform. The idea, uh, what I'm trying to communicate with this slide is. You don't get your normal, uh, I see that there is a 91 here, the former Investec, you do get your net group and, and Sunlam investment. But but the, the idea here is to showcase that we've got um, funds on the platform or asset managers on the platform that you wouldn't normally have access to as a South African investor unless you go through us. I mean, some of these names, I would imagine you see you, you are seeing for the first time, DWS, for instance, Henderson uh, Global Investors, BlackRock. I think you know they've made strides in the country, and their brand is quite, quite out there. MNG Investment, and these are just some of the the big asset managers that we've got on the platform that you can choose from. And then, secondly, in terms of the investment um, 
uh, options that we've got. So what we've done in 2016 is obviously based on the request from our investors. We then took, with the help of a research team, um, a, a team of analysts and portfolio managers, we, do, we did a due diligence of all of our funds on the platform, um, the 700 odd funds, and we came up with a buy list of 30, three zero funds, ranging from cautious, um, moderate, to aggressive in terms of a risk profile. We then put these funds in three different baskets called cautious, moderate, and aggressive. The idea here was to make the investment choice easier for our client, because all you need to do with the help of your advisor is determine your risk profile. If you fall um, in the cautious um, risk profile, then the cautious would be um, an ideal portfolio for you. The beauty of these three risk profile portfolios is they're managed by a team of um, investment experts. And they you don't have to worry sitting at home how the market is doing. They obviously studied the market. And should they see a need to um, go long on bonds, for instance, offshore bonds, or long on, on offshore uh, property, and obviously um, an informed decision on their part, they will execute these decisions on your behalf. So you can sit at home and, and just leave the management of your investors to these professionals. So I think this is a very good value proposition. As you start out investing, before you get to um, learn or know of our funds. In terms of the performance, you know, I'm, I'm, I can talk for hours and tell you the, the value or the benefit of the um, Navigate Optimized portfolios. But in terms of the performance, this is how they've performed. I know this is quite a busy slide, but the, the, the takeaways that I wanna take um, from, from this slide is one, you do have a lot of clients that have got money, um, US dollars, for instance, sitting in a bank account offshore. If you look here, this is how much global cash on average is returning, 1.68. And then the US inflation is uh, currently at, uh, this is at the end of March. So I imagine um, as of today, we're talking a completely different story, but this is a very good indication. US inflation at 2.0. And if you look at um, a U.S. cautious, which you know from a, a risk perspective is right there with your money market funds, with your global cash, it has almost, um, I'll be too optimistic when I say doubled, but it's 1% more, it's returned 1% more than uh, global cash, which makes it, you know, which, which, which makes it a, a very attractive um, proposition if you've got money sitting in a bank account and you've got a very low risk appetite but still you would like that upside uh, the cautious growth um, US dollar fund might be excuse me worth um, considering and then obviously moderate growth and aggressive have um, performed much better than um, the cautious growth very important all three of them outperform uh, US inflation and global cash these portfolios are offered in US dollars and in pounds. So this is the pound version. And again, um, all three of these portfolios have outperformed uh, US, um, sorry, UK cash and UK inflation. I mean, UK cash is, is, is ridiculous. I mean, you're getting um, an interest rate of less than 1%, 0.61. If you were to invest, move your the money from your bank account into the optimized um, cautious growth, GBP, you're getting three times um, more than that, 3.48. And obviously, if you've got a more risk appetite, you've got a slightly more um, risk appetite, you can play. And, and the beauty, which I want to mention before I leave this slide, is should you sit between um, the cautious growth and the um, moderate growth, by all means, you can diversify across both portfolios, perhaps uh, put 50% of your money in the cautious growth and 50% of your money in the moderate growth. That is uh, a possibility at Lisa International. And then thirdly, on the investment options portfolio, we've got um, share portfolios which we um, offer through Sunlam Private Wealth. You would know that with a share portfolio, you can either do execution only what that means is you are making your own decisions. You are buying and selling. 
this is very ideal for somebody who says, look, I don't want to um, trade much, but I've, I've heard from a friend that, uh, for instance, buying an Apple share could be could make a lot of sense from um, an investment perspective. What then what you would do is you'd open up an SPW account, Sunland Private Wealth account, execution only, and only buy an execution only uh, portfolio. With Sunland Private Wealth, we've also got a very similar value proposition in the SPW discretionary portfolio, where you get a team of um, portfolio managers managing asset classes ranging from bonds, cash, and equities, offshore equities that you can um, outsource the management of your share portfolio to. And then obviously with the mandate, uh, you sign off, uh, you, you sign a mandate. And they, they again, they, they've got a moderate, um, a cautious and aggressive um, portfolio. Depending on your risk profile, then they will uh, put you in the appropriate um, risk bracket. And then fourthly, and, and for us, this is uh, a phenomenal product. So within the global life plan, again, I repeat this, within the global life plan, you can have funds, you can have a model portfolio. The minimum product investment is 25,000 US dollars. I use US dollars for obvious reasons. And you can have um, a share portfolio. These are the three uh, uh, investment options that I've mentioned. Once you feel like the markets are volatile, which are at the moment, we on occasion, two occasions, at the end of May, as well as the end of November, you as people watching this presentation or in this webinar are in luck because due to uh, the pandemic, we couldn't launch the end of May tranche of this product. So we, we're looking at um, June, late June, uh, beginning of July. It's a structured note. It's called the International um, Global Market Leaders. Simply put, this product protects your capital. It's a very nice diversifier. You know, I always say um, guys from Good For Show will, will, will probably reprimand me for this as I'm not allowed to give advice. However, I always, when I, when I chat to clients, I always say to them, it is worth diversifying a, a portion of your, your entire investment into this product. Because what this product does is whatever you put in, if you decide to put 40% of your investment, that 40% is protected. It's got capital protection. I use this slide. This is um, our previous, um, so that this would be the November uh, 2019 tranche, where we offered clients an upside of 250% of the market. We guaranteed them 90% of the capital. What that means is, if we hit uh, a market crash, if we are hit by a market crash and the markets are down 40%, and you've given us, um, you put 100,000 into 100,000 US dollars into this investment, 90% of your 100,000 will be protected. It won't be subject to market um, and, and be down 40%. And that is why I say it's a very good uh, diversifier in, in an overall portfolio. I'm going to share more details um, via email on this product. The next tranche um, should be end of June, early July. And then obviously the next is around um, September of 2020. Very good product for clients who have no risk appetite, none whatsoever. And then in terms of, I mean, I alluded earlier on, I said I was going to delve into the flagship global life plan. I would say arguably about 80% of our investments or our assets under management sit in the global life plan. And, and it's for obvious reasons, really. Global life plan firstly offers state planning. Um, I, I've explained what probate risk is. Um, and because of the estate planning, you don't have any probate risk. It is tax efficient and it offers insolvency protection. From an estate planning perspective, no offshore estate is triggered. When, some, when somebody dies, an executor is, is appointed. I mean, I, I quickly want to explain the executor's fees um, point here. Somebody dies in this country, an executor gets appointed by the court and they manage your, your, your estate and they can charge up to 5% of your estate. Because the global life plan is domiciled in Bermuda, it, it falls out of your SA estate. 
So the, whatever sits in the global life plan, if you've got 90% of your money or your assets sitting in a global life plan, the executor will deal with the 10% and they'll be able to only charge the fee on the 10% that you've got in the country. And, and that's another upside of the global life plan. Such as assets I mentioned, I showed you a slide earlier, um, how such as assets work in the US and how much you can end up paying half of your um, investment to your heirs instead of paying 100% or transferring 100% as you would in the global life plan. Another uh, huge benefit of the global life plan is its tax efficiency. I've, I've alluded to this before, but I just want to delve deep. What I want to um, point out here, I mean, tax, again, is calculated um, and paid within the plan, so you don't have to worry about um, submissions. Um, CGT, normally in your own individual capacity, you would pay CGT of 12%, but in this product specifically, you only pay um, 12%. So, sorry, sorry. Own personal capacity, 18 but you're paying 12 in this product. You're saving 6%. Um, percent income tax at a flat 30 percent if you are an investor and you are in a tax bracket between 35 and 45 percent you immediately are saving on income tax as you invest in the global life plan and the beauty of the global life plan is as we convert rents into um dollars we forget about the dollar de uh, depreciation and everything is expressed in us dollars what that means is every percentage that I've alluded to is in US dollars. We haven't even taken into account a RAND depreciation against the dollar. I was looking at the RAND uh, performance against the dollar this morning. If you were invested um, on the 2nd of June 2019, a year ago, if you had bought um, dollars, today you'd be up 20% because the dollar then was about 14 Rand 40 and it's now at um, 17 Rand um, 50. So you've made 20% just on currency, which is which is phenomenal. And this is not even looking at what the underlying performance of your investment is. Insolvency protection, after three years from the inception date of your global life plan, after three years, any uh, your market value or the amount that's sitting in your global life plan, should you go under? I had a, a client, um, a, 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 an advisor that had a doctor client I mean, doctors are exposed. Yes, they do have insurance um, to cover themselves, but businesses, business owners, should you go under and creditors come after you? If you've got money sitting in the global life plan and you've had that plan for longer than three years, they won't be able to touch that money. And this is on the Long-Term Insurance Act. Um, another uh, upside about Glacier International generally is the consolidated reporting. So all your investments are in one statement multiple investment, uh, multiple investment, the model portfolios are available. And most importantly, you get access to the website and you can view your investment. What we're trying to develop now in light of COVID-19 and now one cannot go and make people sign documents. We, we are in the process of developing functionality to trade online. By trading, I mean, be able to make switches, to be able to make withdrawals. Uh, very importantly, I know I've, I've exceeded my time here. I should have speak, spoken for about half an hour. Very importantly, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. The global life plan is liquid. It's structured as an endowment, and it might mislead you to think that you get your one loan, one surrender in the first five years, and there's all there's um, a, 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 a indication of, or, 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 of, of a, a limited investment term of five years. All that is, is indicative. In terms of the global life plan, you can withdraw up to 100 times in the first five years. So it is very liquid. After five years, it becomes an open-ended plan, and you can do with it as you please. You can withdraw as much as you, you can. If you'd like to add more, we might have to um, start a new plan and look at um, starting a new plan or, or, or look at adding into the existing plan. I mentioned this earlier on in my uh, introduction. We've got offices in Bermuda, uh, administration per, per, uh, offices in Bermuda, Malta, uh, Dubai, and Europe. Client services is in Cape Town. Uh, we, we've got regional managers and account managers across the country. And yeah, that's my, my presentation. Um, any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll check on the app, this app.
Thank you. Thank you, Abdile. Um, yes, there's two questions. Uh, if you can click on it, you can actually uh, maybe just stop your share, or I'll stop your share, and then you just answer, start answering the questions from 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 the top. I see there's two questions currently. Um, give me a second. Close video. How do I stop my share without uh, escaping? Okay, let me. See. I'm going to close your video. If I if I drop your video, then uh, oh, there we go. Okay, uh, we've got you. You can start asking the questions. Thank you very much. Click on questions. You had market currently very um, high, even with effects of Corona pandemic. Is it still a good time to invest there? Twofold. This question is twofold. Remember, when, 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 when we answer such questions from a South African perspective, one has to look at how much it is to, to convert, to, to buy US dollars. Yes, I agree 100%. And it is quite a, a pleasant surprise that the US markets have really throughout this pandemic. I would imagine maybe that's um, attributable to most of uh, the US market driving stocks being uh, tilted toward um, biotech stocks, and that's why there's they still um, money to be made in terms of the, the US market. But from, from one thing or one comment that I've, that I've received quite often from South African investors is, is this a good time to actually invest offshore as a South African investor who's got rents? Yes, one might say um, the rent to the dollar has been in the region of about 15 rand. It's now sitting at 17, 18. Should I not wait and um, only invest once it's pulled back to about 16? Because of the, you've actually, um, your question is an answer to why one needs to invest. Because of the attractiveness of the US market, if you are investing now at 17 and just on the basis of the US market and how they're performing, you are due to make 10% in six months. What, what, what is it to lose, uh, to lose out on an opportunity to, to externalize in six months at 16 rand if compared to now at 1740? From a percentage basis, it, it, is, it makes more sense to externalize now. I don't know if I've answered that question um, fully. And then the second question, um, is the current exchange rate providing an opportunity or should we make? Oh no, I've answered this question. Um, I, I think what, what clients tend to, to focus on is the actual numbers, 17, 44, and um, 16, for instance. But from a percentage basis, if you are buying dollars at, at 17 rand and you wait for 16.50, you would have, from a percentage basis, saved a fraction, not a fraction, but from a percentage saving, you wouldn't have saved much. If you externalize today at 17 and you are due 20% in the offshore market and somebody else waits for the dollar rent exchange to pull back to 16 and, and if you compare it from now, um, they would have made a saving of about 5%, 10%. Still, because you externalized at 17 and you made in dollar tens 20%, you have far outperformed, you've doubled um, the performance of somebody who's waited. So I, I and another um, comment on, on this question is, nobody knows where, where the rent dollar is going. Yes, we would like it to pull back. From a South African uh, investor's perspective, looking to invest offshore, we would, all, we would all like it to pull back to 15, 14, and hopefully 13, but nobody can, can, can sit here, no professional can sit here, they would be lying to you. Nobody can sit here and tell you in a year's time, dollar rent should be at about 50. So the best time to invest from a, a, an exchange rate perspective is when you decide when you've got the money to, to invest. I've got another question when it comes to um, overall goals of the investment. If I want it offshore, should I take it offshore? So it comes down to overall goal of the investment. Uh, if I want it also, should um, I should take it also? Yeah. One of the reasons for
for offshore um, investing should be diversification. And I always try to warn clients um, against emotional investing. When, 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 when Zuma and his cronies um, do what they did uh, to our government in the, in the nine years that they were in power, and you decide, not anymore, I'm going to take my money. That's an emotive decision. And, and sometimes it might not, not, not be the best. But what, what I always say to clients is, look, I mean, if we are to take the, 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 the globe, the world, as an investable market, the JSE accounts for less than 1% of the entire world market. So if you've got your um, money fully invested in SA, you are only exposed to less than 1% of the entire globe. Can you imagine? Once you start tapping into the offshore market, the US, for instance, accounts for about 20% of the world market. That's where you get um, diversification. So if for any reason one wants to invest offshore, it should be firstly for diversification. And then secondly, because of the um, return component of investing offshore, doesn't comprise only of the market performance. Even if the markets now, as they are, are not performing as well as they should be, if you take somebody that invested last year and, and, and invested rands and, and obviously converted and bought dollars, the person has made 20% on the basis of the currency alone. Even if the markets are flat, you as a South African investor, if you bought rands on the 2nd of June 2019, if you bought a, a, a 1 a million rands worth of dollars, if you brought them today, if you, if you cast out and brought the same um, dollars today, you'd get 1.2 million. You would have made 200,000 gain on the basis of the currency, not even withstanding um, what, how the markets have performed. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Andile. Um, yes, uh, I uh, I think that was great. I think a, a lot of our clients have have a, have a better idea of the the vehicles that that we we can actually access via Glacier International. And uh, and like some of the questions came came through, uh, is it a good time to to invest offshore? Um, I think I think the, the the most important thing is you should invest offshore for the right reasons. Uh, it's not trying to to time it or or, or do it. Uh, you need to see what is the what is the, the the particular place that this this exposure has in your currency? So thank you for your time this afternoon. We really appreciate it, and 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 we enjoy working with Lacey International, and assisting our clients to take money offshore. Uh, we're gonna uh, get uh, oh here we go. Say goodbye. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it, um, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Everybody that, that listened in this afternoon, uh, we, we really appreciate uh, your time that you've taken to, to listen. I, we really hope that it added value. Uh, be on the lookout for, for our invite for the next webinar next week, uh, Tuesday, same place, same time. Uh, we got a, a really nice guest speaker and a, a good topic. Uh, if, if memory serves me right, the, the topic will be uh, regarding um, the, the, the importance of a, a retirement annuity and does it still have place in one's uh, investment portfolio as an investment vehicle? And uh, one of the things that we get a lot from clients currently is the, the question about uh, will the government once again access pension funds? Uh, Regulation 28 of the Pension Funds Act, how, how will well, all these rumors about uh, the government accessing uh, pension funds and pension fund investments uh, affect you? So. Please, uh, if you've got questions regarding that, uh, subscribe for our for our webinar. And and for the clients that listened last week, sorry, we just we we got a little bit of a glitch regarding the recording for for last week's uh, investment webinar with with Karen from Foot. Uh, as soon as that uh, has gone up on our YouTube channel, then we'll let you know. You can also go to to our YouTube channel and and just subscribe, and you'll get notified uh, when when a new video gets uh, gets lo loaded on the channel. Or when a new recording gets loaded so be on the lookout and thank you for joining us really appreciate it and if there's anyone that would like to schedule a meeting hit hit the link below speak to one of the advisors we we here to help you i'm going to leave it on for for about five seconds if you would like to to hit that schedule a consultation link uh, see you next week thank you for joining